Brown. I'm training manager at Jebco Associates, and I'm also the owner of Times Dark Captains. And welcome to another video. And this particular one is going to about, be about the uh, mold rules and the movement of Texas Department of Licensing and Regulation as of September 2021. Well, uh, viewers, uh, looks like we have another problem again with Texas Department of Licensing and Regulation. Uh, as you know, since uh, TDLR has taken over the uh, Texas Mold Assessment Remediation Rules from the Department of State Health Services, there has been a drastic reduction in compliance with the Texas Mold Rules. The state of our mold industry as of 2021 in the state of Texas is in a shambles. We have a real problem. Uh, just the other day in the Mid-Cities area, I did a few uh, Google searches, Smart Page searches, uh, Bing searches, and uh, Yahoo searches and on the various search engines just to see who's doing mold remediation. And uh, on the majority of the sites of the, of the search engines I was in, when the mold things, uh, when the mold uh, companies came up, and there's some pretty big names on there too. I mean, I'm not gonna say their names, but, uh, but anyway, there are some big franchise names on these as well. Uh, probably out of like 30, in most of all, most all the ones, again, in the HEB uh, area in between uh, Fort Worth and, and Dallas, uh, pretty much 36, the top 36 results that came up that actually went to company websites, only three, only three were licensed. And all of these are illegally and stating clearly on their website that they are doing testing for mold, they are doing remediation for mold, they're doing clearance for mold, in-house, all in one. Uh, just a few years ago, before this went to the uh, Texas Department of Licensing and Regulation, if you did the same search, usually what happened is somewhere on that website you'd say, is Texas Mold Remediator, here's their license number, or Texas uh, uh, Mold Consultant, and here's their license number. You don't see that anymore. So clearly the, um, the uh, program has fallen into disrepair and I leave that at the disengagement of the Texas Department of Licensing and Regulation, and uh, it has had hideous effects uh, on what is going on with our industry. And it's kind of sad because this was a very good program, and we are going to see and have started to see the same problems that the Texas mold rules corrected are now coming out. So this video I want to try to give you a baseline of what's going on, I would also like to give you some talking points at the end of this uh, video for the comments. Because on the Texas Department of Licensing and Regulation mold webpage, they do have this notice of intent to discuss whether this particular programs, well, there's several programs. They're also trying to get rid of the, uh, the code enforcement officers again. And those are all the people who get licensed to go out and look at all the restaurants. So TDLR is showing that they are an obsolete ineffective and corrupt organization as far as I'm concerned. Uh, they want to take the money. I don't know what the hell they spend it on. And they are also just, they're not doing anything. I think the TDR leadership is completely disengaged with their purpose and thumbing their nose at the legislative uh, demands that are made of them. Now the Texas rules came about because we had such a problem. We had court cases being clogged our civil courts were being clogged with mold uh, cases, and uh, we had no real, we didn't have any kind of maturation or determination of what the, what the particular field was gonna be. And then also the insurance industry, which is the 900 pound gorilla in the room, if you will, uh, basically was losing a lot of money. And the insurance industry in Texas really needs to figure out and engage with us the Texas uh, uh, mold remediation and assessment industry very much because they're going to, they're losing billions of dollars um, and I'll get to that in a little bit in a minute here as well and then the other thing was if you followed the rules you could produce a CMDR certificate of mold damage remediation and then you could go ahead and um, and uh, have your civil liability changed and offloaded onto the consultant and to the contractor who are doing the mold remediation for you so the the rule is more than about just 25 contiguous square feet. Now, we've also had an event that happened just in this last year, this last February, when we had the great Texas uh, freeze up. 
Uh, there's a lot of things that went on, but we had a whole bunch of building material, uh, buildings uh, that were absolutely just destroyed because of the first the freeze, and then the following once the pipes uh, 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 thawed out, a deluge of water. Uh, there are I've talked to so many facility managers, and they came to our classes and whatnot, and it was a it was such a big uh, problem. So uh, so anyway, the uh, the outcome of this is, as usual, anytime there was uh, since 2017, when Texas Department of Licensing and Regulation got a disaster declaration from the governor, they basically went hands off. That's what they did in Hurricane Harvey, and they allowed Hurricane Harvey. Uh, mold emergency to go on for three and a half years. And the thing is, they don't want to spend any money on developing an enforcement capability within TDLR, which makes no sense of a licensing agency. What good is a license if you're not going to penalize some, a licensee for doing stupid things? Or penalizing somebody for doing a project that requires a license and then not doing anything? What, what's, the, what's the carrot and stick here? I mean, this is a dysfunctional, delusional agency and uh, completely not worth their, their, the fee funds we pay them. So, uh, so anyway, because of their hands-off approach, it, is, it has caused problems to consumers. Uh, the, uh, I've, I reached out to the Texas Department of Insurance and talked to somebody for about uh, an hour with them explaining what was going on, especially with the Texas freeze, and I have not heard back from them. And they don't seem to care that these drying companies now are just basically calling mold water damage again. And they're, you're getting charged for it no matter what. Uh, insurance adjusters are, at, are writing protocols. Insurance adjusters are doing assessments, which are violations of conflict of interest with their own insurance companies. They're not supposed to be doing that. And that is, not, that is why the consultant part was supposed to be taken out and given to the consumer. So the consumer would have some level of protection here. So, Basically, the Texas Department of Licensing and Regulation took a perfectly good program that was functioning under the Department of State Health Services and have completely screwed that, that uh, uh, program up. It is now completely dysfunctional. TDLR has not responded to complaints about uh, licensees, uh, the people operating without a license, and especially doing assessments, which was not granted under the exclusion, under the uh, disaster declaration for the, for the Texas freeze-up. Now, taking the Texas freeze-up, that particular uh, disaster exemption allowed people to do remediation. So they could remediate mold, but they had to register with the state. They had to do all these particular things, and then they could start doing remediation, uh, mold remediation and water drying all at once. However, the CMDR, the consumer, uh, the the uh, Certificate of Mold Damage Remediation still has to have an assessment done for it. And they said, we didn't have to have assessments to go ahead for remediation, but if you're going to go and get a CMDR, you have to go through the assessment protocol work plan uh, uh, clearance CMDR uh, generation under the rules. So uh, most insurance companies are requiring that. And, uh, and, and so uh, there are a lot of people who aren't getting paid. This was all put together so the consumer would be protected from uh, uh, rogue uh, contractors, rip and skip artists and everything. What has happened across the United States is now the drawing industry has become the old blue tarp and the uh, roofing industry that had followed around and caused so much havoc on, cons on unsuspecting consumers during disasters. And if there's anything that needs to be regulated in the state of Texas, it would be the drying industry. The drying industry is continually violating and holding out the IICRC S520 as stating, see, we have to dry first and mold the secondary to it. Well, that's not in the, in the IICRC S500 drying standard. And you can't call it something else. That would be a, uh, a, a fraud. And uh, that is not approved. So IICRC also needs to get its uh, stuff together as well when looking at their people that they've certified who are not following their particular standards. But that's, a, that's another video for another day. If you want to know about that, I do have the IICRC uh, S500 and, and uh, S520 and the, and, the, and, the, uh, and the reference documents with those as well. And a comparison to the Texas Mold Assessment 
uh, and remediation rules, and then also the asbestos requirements and lead requirements as well. All those have to be taken care of before drying. And what happened in the uh, February thing is these guys just went through and stripped out uh, buildings, stripped out building materials, and they didn't even put in fans or anything. They just basically took out wet drywall and said, there, we're done with that. Now, with these contractors coming in from who knows where, uh, they have created a liability problem in the state of Texas. So we have them go through a commercial property, be it a church, an apartment building, some kind of facility, a, a retail outlet, an office. They tear out all the drywall. They leave crumbs all over the place. And then somebody comes back in to check it, and now we've got an asbestos uh, uh, contamination here. And then we've got mold all over the place because they did inadequate drying because they're rip and skip. This is what happens when TDLR does not engage during a disaster. If there's anything that needs to be taken care of during a disaster, it is drying and mold. And you can't just go, nope, got too much to do. No, you should be easing licensing requirements and get them licensed and then them get them go through a regulated process. Even granting temporary license would be better. The Texas Mold Assessment and Remediators Association, known as TAMARA, actually, actually was engaging with TDLR and TDLR, we've engaged a couple of times with them. And while they were talking with us, they had already days before made a, de made a determination that would be opposite. So they basically submarined us twice. And they have shown that they are not trustworthy at all. I can't believe that we have civil servants this duplicitous and misrepresent things not only to the people they regulate, but to consumers who they are supposed to be protecting and then also to the, to the uh, Senate and the legislature as well. Now, this thing that's going on here is it's become the Wild West now. Now, I'm in a training business. I like to sell training classes. We have got IICRC uh, trainers who are telling people, no, you don't have to have the, the Texas uh, training. You can use the, uh, the applied uh, remediation, uh, microbial remediation technician. No, you can't. It has to be one of the six training providers. That's what's in the statute. That hasn't changed. They're not changing it. They're not going to change it for this very reason, because IICRC does not hold their own certificate holders and, and cert certification holders uh, uh, liable and responsible for their, for their problems. And a lot of these are basically referring to IICRC and then not following IICRC. So anyway, for all of you, uh, real estate people who have been hit or hurt by this, like you have this drying group that comes in unregulated, tears stuff out, and now you got asbestos contamination or you got mold all over the place, you can take action against them, especially if they have said they followed IICRC S500 because IICRC S500 and S520 requires them to take care of the asbestos and the mold first. It's the clear in their standards. So if they're holding up as a shield IICRC, and they didn't follow it, you have a case. And as long as it's in their documents, that's a good thing. And see, that's what's so good about the protocol development and the work plan development. If they follow ICRC in the protocol, they follow ICRC in the, in the work plan, you shouldn't have any of these problems. If you hire licensees, by definition, they're not going to violate the rule generally. I mean, drivers, uh, licensed drivers still go past the speed limit, but they're not going 150 down the, down the road, they know there are limits to how fast they can speed without being uh, having their license taken away. But with the uh, with the uh, mold remediation and with uh, with probably most of your other Texas Department of Licensing and Regulation license uh, 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 programs, there is very little chance that TDLR is going to take away anybody's license. So that means once you get a license. Texas Department of Licensing and Regulation is not going to engage. So with this particular um, tirade I have here, what I'd like to stop here, I'd like to go in and tell you, please go to the Texas Department of Licensing and Regulation website. Please look at the notice of intent to do away with these particular programs. And I would also say, I would also bring in all the rest of the programs, not just mold, but TDLRs kind of just try to, TDLRs where programs go to die. And, uh, and what they want to do is they want to show that the mold regulation is obsolete, no longer needed. There's other ways to deal with it. What the events 
of the winter storm and the Texas freeze up has come to illuminate and show us is that with no regulations, there is liability everywhere and there is no consumer protection. And consumers and the Texas insurance companies are losing hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars of damage to unscrupulous people uh, who basically tear stuff out, rip and skip and go, and they're gone. And there is no, uh, there is no uh, counter clawback. There is no civil liability protection by going to a licensee and go like, hey, you're registered, you're a business, you're, you have to comply with these issues. Again, rip and skip guys are going to come in. They're going to they're form a company with the intent of ripping all this stuff out, ripping people off, getting paid cash, and then that, that company goes dark and then they go open another company. That's how business apparently is done in the United States to these days becoming very unscrupulous and very skeevy in my opinions. But anyway, uh, so, so the first thing we need to say is DSA, uh, TDLR, I'm sorry, TDLR is not doing their legislative mandate on any of these programs. They're basically taking money and then uh, uh, neglecting the responsibility, the legislative responsibility of these. The fallout of this is the, the the uh, insurance companies are getting taken for the, to the cleaners for mold remediation from these unscrupulous, unlicensed people because they just call it water damage and the insurance companies are paying for mold again. And they're paying for mold damage even though it is not in the original insurance policy. So again, the insurance companies are now getting hit with fraud, not quite the level but to the level that they were hit in 2000. So that is a considerable part. Now, since this is the part we bring up, since the Texas mold rules are tied to the Texas Department of Insurance rule, Texas Department of Licensing and Regulation, and this is what you need to have in your comment, Texas uh, Department of Licensing and Regulation now has to do a cost-benefit analysis on all stakeholders. And the, the stakeholders is going to be the insurance industry, the insurance underwriters, homeowner-based policies, and also your consumer, pol your uh, commercial policies as well. And we need to hear from like the Bo Building Owners and Managers Association, real estate notification. I mean, it's it's a bigger deal than oh, I think this program's just uh, obsolete and we're going to do away with it. No, you can't, because it has a, a legal setting. It has an insurance setting. It has a consumer protection setting. So in order to do away with it, it's not, well, is it obsolete or not? What have you been doing to make sure that the consumers are protected? TDLR has done nothing for that. What are they doing to make sure the insurance companies and the Texas Department of Insurance rules are followed? Nothing. So here we have a rogue agency that is charging all these licensing fees and not executing anything on them as far as complaints or anything else. They are a rogue agency. Now, these are also, this is also the same agency and the same people who are regulating electricians and HVAC, for God's sakes. So that's the second part. The third part, under administrative uh, pr rules and procedures, we all need to bring this out as well. Under the Administrative Rules and Procedures Act, they now have to, evo to, have, to have to have Everybody who is affected by that come in to comment, and not this, not this comment on notice of intent, but they now have to do a cost-benefit analysis and let that other agency, Texas Department of Insurance, to do their cost-benefit analysis on what would happen if the rule went away. The same thing with their code enforcement. They have to figure out and go talk to health groups and go like, well, what's the impact of how many food poisonings Texas is going to have over 30 million people and how many restaurants are going to are going to have people get food poisoning food trucks and all this other stuff in Houston Austin Dallas San Antonio and then all the other great fine Texas communities as well so as you can see this is a this is really you know this is one of the one of the problems of the COVID shutdown we have way too many bureaucrats sitting around in their own home dreaming crap like this up and uh, they need to all go back into the office. If they have to get vaccinated, get vaccinated. If they have to get tested, get tested. If they have to wear a mask, get, but they need to go back into the office and start having meetings amongst these people. 
because right now we're having unilateral uh, de decisions being made by these agencies, and they're not going through the strict review or even probably meetings. Again, these Zoom meetings, I guarantee you, uh, half these people on the Zoom meetings are playing tic-tac-toe or something else on these, is my bet. So the, the, the things we have to state that, number one, there has to be cost-benefit analysis for the consumer uh, for protection of uh, mold and uh, mold remediation and those kind of aspects. They have to show that this will not affect a property value uh, unduly, and then they should also show that the prices of mold remediation would go up or down and would be effective. So you wouldn't, you know, with a licensee with all the responsibilities, if they clear it, it's cleared. If they don't clear it, has it been? Well, with a non-licensee, you have none of those guarantees. The second thing we need to get into is, again, the insurance issue for that homeowner and the same thing for the commercial business entity as well. They have to have cost-benefit analysis done for them as well. And then the last thing is the cost-benefit analysis and the impact on the Texas Department of Insurance across consumer uh, 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 policies for homeowner, for property, for commercial, for all these other things that will be affected by this. And we still haven't got the numbers in, but the Texas, uh, Texas uh, fr Great Freeze-Up probably cost more than Hurricane Harvey, and that was pretty dang big. So uh, the other part would be the issue of the lack of transparency and the lack of, of, uh, of engagement of the Texas Department of Licensing in any of their programs. We know for a fact that many people have been reported to the state of Texas for doing mold assessment and mold remediation just in the Dallas area. And the state of, and Texas Department of Licensing Regulation has done nothing. There have been no fines. There's been nothing done with that. And then the very last thing is, what the heck has happened to all our money? We have been paying them annual notification, uh, notification fees for projects, and then every two years we've been paying them licensing fees. What are they doing with that money? It sure isn't on enforcement, and uh, I think they need an audit. And I think this, the Texas Department of Licensing and Regulation, the last talking point is, they need to be reformed. This is a completely broken, corrupt, and impotent organization. They are not serving the, pe the people of the state of Texas. They are not carrying out the wishes and the requirements of the Texas legis uh, legislators and therefore they are a rogue agency. So, yes, this, is, uh, this has been the third time in probably six, eight years, and the only people who want this rule to go away, the only people who are pushing this rule to go away is Texas Department of Licensing and Regulation. There is no great conspiracy. We have bureaucrats deciding and overriding legislative intent and legislative desire. These guys need to be reined in, and some of them need to be fired. Others need to be put in and uh, have, have criminal charges brought on them. People of this quality should not be working for the state of Texas on behalf of the citizens of the state of Texas. So anyway, um, I'm kind of done with TDLR myself. They are n <laughs> they will not receive um, courtesy from me face to face um, and uh, I'm pretty much done with them. Get a hold of Texas Mold Assessment and Remediators Association, tmara.org. Uh, get involved. Uh, this is going to come up for the legislature. This is not immediate so don't get, oh my gosh they're going to do away with it in six months. No, that's not what they're doing. They're looking to see if the next legislative session, remember we just had a legislative session, so they're looking to see in two years if this, is going, if this is worthwhile getting away. So we've got two years to put them in the target and put them in the very uncomfortable spot and make them squirm. So that means it's all, all, uh, all hands on deck, quicks the word, so we can respond to this as an industry and protect our industry and protect our consumers and protect Texas insurance companies as well. Anyway, engage. Please join Tamara if you would like if you would like to get involved with this, and I will have that link down below this particular video. 
So anyway, if you are a uh, building uh, agency group like uh, BOMA, Building Managers no uh, Association, and you would like to have a discussion about this, I am willing, if you're a news organization, I'm willing to discuss it. I'm knowledgeable about the Texas rules and also on the standards by which they are following as well and the history of what's been going on. So, till later, I hope you fare well.